Hello and welcome to, welcome to another one of my tutorials. This is going to be a two-part video tutorial on a post-COVID shop survey. The first part is going to be a photographic survey and the second part is going to be a survey about, of all the shop names and pop names and so on. History of course does not have to be fado fado. I think we'll all agree that this COVID pandemic and the lockdown will be considered a historical event by, by future generations. And one of the impacts it has is on the local economy. You've all seen shops closing and maybe new ones opening. So I think it is time for a stock take of all the shops. And yes, I admit I will trick you into mapping on OpenStreetMap again. But at the end of this, you will have archival material for your historical society or for your personal use as well. I was inspired to do this survey by the Kilkenny Archaeological Society, who did their first surveys in the 1950s when they compiled names of shop owners in, in their times and also looked back onto archival material, newspaper, advertisement and so on to establish a timeline going back even decades before the 1950s. And then again they did a photographic survey of the shop fronts in 2001 and another one more recently in 2019, if I remember correctly, uh, of the shop names and pop names and so on. But I consider it being a good time for a new one, using new media, but it will also leave you with paper archival material for your group. Mapillary was developed in Sweden and is an open data alternative to Google Street View. The same way you must not use Google to obtain any information to put in OpenStreetMap, you must not use Google Street View imagery as a source. But with Mapillary there is a great alternative. You can basically update the imagery as soon as a new shop or housing estate opens and help other mappers keep OpenStreetMap up to date. And because you take the pictures, you can also use them for your archive. It comes in an app for Android or iPhone and can be downloaded wherever you download your apps. You can use it walking, cycling, driving and even kayaking. Let me explain the app real quick. I would suggest you familiarize yourself with the app before you set out so you don't have to block the sidewalk or sit in the car with the engine running. After installing the app, you open it and will be asked about access to your location and media files. Agree to that, otherwise the app will not work. The app will ask you to sign in. You can again use your OpenStreetMap account. You can also create an account for your organization if you want to make it a group effort and find all the uploads in one account. Next, you will see a screen with a map showing your location. I did not want you to know where I live, so I moved the map a bit to hide the location marker. Now you know where I don't live. You see a bottom menu and a side menu that you can open by tapping the row of lines. We're only concerned about the settings here. For the automated capture, you can change the settings for the interval here, as well as the pausing, which mostly applies for capturing while walking. When you leave the settings, you go back to the map view and see the bottom menu. When you click on Capture now and you have an individual account and a group account, you will be asked to choose. After that, the camera view will open. You see how the app helps you to level your shots with the horizon? At the bottom, you see your battery status. Remember to bring a power bank. And the remaining storage space. The number of pictures taken will be displayed in this area too. To the right you see an arrow. When you click on it, you will be asked to set the position of the camera in relation to your driving or walking direction. I will be taking pictures of the opposite side of the road walking, so I will set mine to the arrow pointing left. You can leave the default and change the settings on the website later if you wish to do so. Back on the camera view, you see a switch that either says A or M for automatic or manual. I want to take the pictures manually of each shop rather than automatic after a certain distance, so I have mine on M. Below that is the button to take pictures. If for some reason you find that the app is not working on your phone, you can just use the camera function on your phone or an ordinary camera and upload the image series on the Mapillary website. For this shop survey, I am only going to walk. The street I have chosen is Irish Town in Kilkenny. It is a short and enough street to do and there have been some changes recently, so let's get out into the cold.
I'm really sorry, the picture is so small, I don't know what happened there. I think it must have something to do with recording it on the phone and turning, rotating the phone and um, and then transferring it to the computer or something. Anyway, I took a picture, then I took a few steps, took the next picture, walked a further, took the next picture and tried to make sure I had all the shop entrances with the names on them. And also... What's really handy on a pillory is that once you upload them onto the website, all the faces are blurred in the pictures and also the license plates. So there's no problem with GDPR or privacy or anything like that. Sometimes it does also blur shop names, unfortunately, because it's artificial intelligence. You know, it's not as smart as we are yet. And the pillory on the website will make it into a picture sequence so you don't see all the walking. And we will look at that on the website in a little bit. To upload the images, you click on the upload button in the app and it'll show you all your sequences that you have captured. And you can just click on the gray upload button there to the right. Or if you want to have a look at your sequence, maybe there's one that you don't like that's blurred. Then you can delete that and then you click the green upload button and it automatically uploads all the pictures. If you don't want to waste your data on that, I recommend that you wait until you're in a Wi-Fi zone and upload it then. You don't have to do it there and then on the street. Just do it wherever is suitable for you, because it will take a while to upload them, depending on the number. So you might just do that over a cup of tea. I'm on the Mapillary website now and I'm logged in and if I click on the top right there is an arrow that opens the side menu and you see there's a feed tab and an uploads tab. I'm clicking on uploads and it shows me my latest uploads so there were I did a bit on the parade and then the two sequences in Irish Town. And I'm clicking on the one that you watched me record. And you see in the bottom left corner, it opens a preview of that sequence. And in the background, it jumps to the loca location of the sequence where the sequence was captured. And the background map is Mapillary street map. You can change that in the layers option, map styles to open street map if you want to. And you see there's way more information in that. First of all, we're going to maximize the window with the sequence, with the photographs, by clicking on the little arrow in the top right. And that maximizes that window and minimizes the map. I'm also going to close the side menu. So this is the first picture I took. I'm also going to minimize the map view further by clicking on the minus. So there we go. This is the picture I've taken. You see down here it says AN image by Anna Caro for OSM IRL because accidentally I recorded them as the group. And it also gives you the date of when the picture was taken, which is important to know how recent it is. And up here, in the middle you see a play button that would start a slideshow and if I click on the arrow it follows the sequence along and I will do that. There are 11 pictures in total. you see here the person that was in the video the face is all blurred And if I want to go back to the map view and maximize that, 
you might have seen already that it's all over the place. The, the blue track is uh, what I have captured. I'm just going to show you how to clean that up because we don't want to give anyone the impression that I took a picture here. So I'm clicking, I'm moving this to the side and on the right hand side below the share button there's one that says image options with three little dots. I'll click on that and then I can go to editing and edit current sequence. And it opens this window in the middle which covers up half the track so you always have to move the map in the background so it's not covered otherwise you can't move it along. Open the preview again and here I'm taking the last node of the sequence and I will move it to where I stood where when I took the picture so that was somewhere near this traffic light. And you see that grey window is in the way again. So I'm moving this here. And then I take the next one and it shows in between those two houses. So I place it so that it's opposite that spot. And so on until I reach the end of the sequence. It doesn't have to look like that. I think that's just a problem with my phone that the GPS is not really precise on it. I've noticed that with other apps, um, you might be more lucky with your phone. I have aligned them all now along the footpath and you see how the viewpoint is pointing just up. Um, remember how I set it to take pictures out of the car to the left? Sometimes it doesn't do that after all. So what I said, you can set this in on the website afterwards. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Uh, in this gray middle, you can click on normalize sequence and it explains it. Set every image to look at the next one in the sequence. Because that is the way if you had the phone in front of you and you would walk in that direction, it would take pictures, you know, every picture would follow the next one in the sequence kind of a way. So you see it normalizes it that way. That was my walking direction, remember? But of course I took the pictures of across the road. So I will set the offset to minus 90 because it's minus 90 degrees or you can also just put in 270 you know whatever um, you prefer and then you click set offset and you see it turns them all into the direction where I actually took the photographs and then I have to click submit 11 changes as a new change set and it won't show the changes immediately it'll take a while for it to adapt that so you can leave the website and do whatever and come back later. What you could also do if you haven't saved the files on your phone elsewhere, you can go and download the sequence. Again on the three dots, download image, which would download the, the blurred version with where the faces and the license plates are blurred or the unprocessed originals. That might only be possible for your own pictures. And you can also share the sequence, which I will do so I can put the link in the description. So I click on the share button and I get this share and I click on the little symbol that stands for copying. And you can also use get embed code and put it on your website and decide if you just want the image that we see on the left, but on full screen, can split the screen between the map view and the imagery or you can have it um, in one. 
you can just play around with that and you don't have to use your own sequences to play around with it you can just go in and choose one that you like and thank you for watching i hope that was helpful and i will see you in the next video